This video classroom lesson is sponsored by Transmission Bench. Visit the transmissionbench.com store for the deluxe super kit, other parts, and even the video classroom lessons used during this project. We've come a long way and made a lot of progress. Most of the large parts have disappeared from our bench. From here on, most of the reassembly will be working with the remaining somewhat smaller control components which go into the valve body area and end of the case. Welcome back to one of the few remaining sessions of this project. This is Ford E4OD 4R100 class lesson 14. Our goals for this lesson are installation of the selector shaft and parking rod assembly, installation of a new intermediate band piston, check balls, and other small parts which go into the case channel casting area, as well as modification and reinstallation of the separator plate, the accumulator body, and we'll also install a new solenoid pack. I've repositioned the transmission sideways with the valve body area facing upward. A few blocks of wood underneath the case will make the channel casting area level. Get the parking pawl, pivot pin, and spring. Arrange and install them like this. The purpose of the spring is to push the pawl away from the parking gear. Get the guide plate and bolt. Install it like so. Torque the bolts to 20 foot pounds, 240 inch pounds, or 27 newton meters. The selector shaft goes in next. Put a few drops of fluid into the shaft bore. Slide the shaft through the new seal, which we installed earlier. We need the small roll pin, which goes in here. We placed it into this box during teardown. Insert the pin into its hole. Move the shaft side to side until you feel it fall into the groove on the shaft. Tap it down to secure it. 
Now get the parking rod and manual valve lever. Slide the end of the rod through the guide plate. Maneuver the slotted hole in the lever onto the end of the shaft as you push down on the detent spring. Install the nut. Tighten it with a 13 16 inch wrench. The next part to replace is the plastic metered orifice which goes into this hole at the rear of the case. This is it. We placed it here with other small parts. There is a new one in the overhaul package. Here is the new one. Put fluid onto it and press it into the case. If you'll recall, we removed the intermediate band piston and pin assembly from this bore during teardown. This is it, but we'll install the new one, which is included in the Deluxe Super Kit. Put fluid onto the wall of the piston bore. Also put some onto the seal and pin of the piston. Install it by simply pushing it downward. If you're working with an earlier E4OD model, replace the cover plate and snap ring. Reinstallation of the check balls is next. This year 2000 demo model had eight balls in these locations. There are actually four different check ball configurations depending upon which model you may be working on. 
This is where the supplemental helpful information sheet, which comes with the superior kit, really comes in handy. Let's look at it. According to the diagrams, You'll install 14 balls if you are working on an early 1989 model and only 10 if it is a late 1989 model. 1990 to 1995 transmissions use 9. The 1996 through 2004 and 2005 models, like our demo model, only need 8. Even though the overhaul package contains new check balls, I like to reinstall the original ones when I can. Get the eight balls which we placed into this box. Once again, if you are working on a 1996 through 2005 model, install eight balls into these locations. If you are installing the Transgo HD2 kit, there are a few special notes about not installing some of the balls. Page 4 of the instructions has three sentences you must follow if you are working on an earlier model. After carefully comparing the separator plate of our 2000 model demo to this diagram, I've determined even though I am installing the kit, I do not need to remove any of the eight balls. If you are working on a 1990 through 1995 model, install a spring-loaded circular filter here. It is mentioned on this page of the Superior Info Sheet. It looks like this, and you'll find a new one in the miscellaneous subkit bag. You would set it into place like this only on 1990 to 1995 models. This is a 2000 model year transmission, so I will not install it. There are two more very, very important components to install into the channel casting. The EPC pressure relief ball and spring. All models require them and they go into this cavity. Here they are. Set the spring in first. Set the quarter inch steel ball onto the end of the spring. The Transgo kit has a replacement high performance pressure relief system. It consists of a new white colored spring and a poppet valve. They are in this bag. If you are installing the Transgo kit, remove the original spring and ball and install the new white spring and valve.
get the separator plate and take it to another work area. If possible, peel the gaskets off in one piece and set them aside. You may need to use a scraper or wear thick gloves and use a razor blade. If you are installing only the Superior Kit and not the Transco Kit too, you should, at this point, match new gaskets from the kit to the plate and install them onto the transmission. Since we are installing the Transco Kit, the plate does need to be modified. Step one on page four explains the installation of a tiny orifice. First, you drill out this hole with a 110 thousandths of an inch drill bit, which comes in the kit. Then you install the orifice from this side of the plate. After that, you turn the plate over and pin it into place with a quarter inch steel ball and hammer. This large bag contains the drill bit and the smaller bag with a quarter inch ball, orifice, and an extremely small plug to be used on some valve bodies in a later step. Set the plate onto wood blocks. By comparing the plate to the drawing on page four, I located the hole and circled it. Enlarge the hole with the 110 thousandths of an inch bit. Set the orifice into place. In order to pin the orifice into place, it must be placed onto a steel surface. I'll use these two flat steel bars from a shop press. You could use a steel table or even the flat part of a vise. Set the quarter inch ball like so. Strike it with a hammer. This will mushroom and expand the soft aluminum orifice tightly within the hole. Now it can't come out. Step two on page four describes how to enlarge three holes with an 81 thousandths of an inch drill bit supplied in the kit. According to the diagram from the instructions, we need to drill out the holes here, here, and here. Obviously, this hole is already large enough. Clean the plate of all metal chips and take it to the transmission. We need the new separator plate gaskets from the overhaul package. 
there will be two or possibly three sets of gaskets in the package depending upon which model of your kit you purchase. Two sets come in this kit. There will be two upper and two lower gaskets with different hole configurations which must be matched to the plate. Matching the gaskets to the plate is very easy. You simply check to make sure no holes are covered. For example, this gasket, which goes between the case channel casting and the plate, does not cover any of the holes. This one did cover a hole, so it is not the correct one. I'll set the right one into place. I also carefully check the lower gasket, which goes on the other side of the plate too. This one did not cover any holes. Install the plate and lower gasket down onto the upper gasket. Make sure the tip of the EPC pressure relief valve is sticking through the plate. If you are installing the Transco HD2 kit, there is a special calibration plate included which must be installed onto this area of the separator plate next. This is it. Step one on page five of the instructions explains how to enlarge the second, third, and fourth accumulator valve feed holes depending upon which type of engine the vehicle has. Our demo transmission goes behind a V8 gasoline engine, so we'll need to drill out the second hole to 94 thousandths, the third hole to between 73 and 82 thousandths, and also drill the fourth hole to 94 thousandths. Now I've circled the holes. I'll drill out the second accumulator feed hole first. It's supposed to be enlarged with a 94 thousandths of an inch bit. I'm actually going to use a 3 seconds inch bit, which measures 93 thousandths and is close enough. I'll skip over the third hole and drill out the fourth hole because it needs to be the same 94 thousandths of an inch size as the second hole. Finally, I'll switch to the slightly smaller 82 thousandths bit and drill out the third accumulator feed hole. Set it into place like so onto the separator plate gasket. A new nylon EPC filter goes into this hole next. 
It is mentioned in step two on page five. This is the old one we removed during teardown. A new one comes in the kit. It's usually in the miscellaneous subkit. Install it into this hole and rotate it a quarter of a turn. Note that if you are not installing the Transco kit, you would still install the filter without the Transco plate. The next subassembly to install is the accumulator valve body, which goes onto the calibration plate. This is the accumulator body. Take it to another work area. Within this casting are spool valve and spring assemblies, which act as shock absorbers to cushion or soften the feel of shifts between first to second, second to third, and third to fourth gear. Both the Superior Kit and Transco Kit contain stiffer springs, which will make the shifts firmer. The kits also have parts to modify the behavior of the line pressure modulator valve located here. We will actually be modifying the accumulator body according to the Transco HD2 kit, but I want to discuss the Superior instructions first for those not installing the Transco kit. Steps one and two of the superior kit for the accumulator body are the last modifications you will have to make if you are only installing the superior kit and not the higher performance Transco kit. Keep in mind the Transco instructions supersede all modifications to this assembly. In other words, follow the steps of only one kit but not both. Again, because we are installing the Transco kit, I am only discussing the Superior Kit accumulator body instructions and not actually changing anything. Step one describes how to modify line pressure. A, you can skip the step. B, add a spring seat from the kit, this part, in order to raise the pressure. Or C, add the spring seat and this white spring for even higher pressure. Step two explains installing a purple and red spring instead of the original small spring into the second, third, and fourth accumulator valve bores. This blue spring is to be used only if one of the outer springs is broken. As I said earlier, I'm not going to install these parts because the instructions are clear and simple. We will, however, actually modify this assembly to the Transco instructions. Page three of the Transco instructions at first seem a little complicated, but I think the steps are pretty easy. At this time, we're only concerned with steps one through four on the top section of the page and not step five. Step one is to drill two holes through the casting if the one you are working on does not have a slot in this area. If not, you must remove all of these components in order to drill the holes. Here's another view of the same area when you turn the casting over. Also note, step four is to install a short blue spring during the same operation. Let's check our demo casting to see if it has the slot. This is the line pressure modulator valve area. There is no slot in this casting, therefore we need to remove the parts from this bore 
in order to drill two holes here and here. Turn the casting over. Remove this retaining clip. Use a pick or small screwdriver to carefully nudge the end of the sleeve out slightly. There is no way to pry the sleeve out any further. You may be tempted to pull it out with pliers, but don't. This will mar the soft aluminum, making it difficult to install the sleeve later. There is another slow but effective way to get it out. Hold the casting like this and tap upward from beneath it with a block of wood. Eventually, it will move out enough for you to pull it out with your fingers. Pull the sleeve out. There is a spool valve in it. Remove this spring seat and small spring. Pull out this larger spring. Finally, use long nose pliers to withdraw an accumulator spool valve. Let's take the casting to the plywood in order to drill the holes. I'll drill the holes with an 82 thousandths of an inch bit. Clean the casting in mineral spirits and blow it dry. After cleaning each of these parts individually in mineral spirits, reinstall them into the bore. Put fluid onto the inner bore wall and onto the accumulator valve. Insert it all of the way in until it bottoms out. Insert the large spring. Set the spring seat and small spring like so. Remove the spool valve from the end sleeve.
get the small blue spring. According to step four, it goes here, into the sleeve, before you install the spool valve. Set the spring into the sleeve. Put paste lube onto the sleeve and spool valve. Insert the valve. Push the sleeve into the casting and replace the retaining clip. Moving on, step two on page three describes replacing the third and fourth accumulator springs with new ones from the kit. We'll work on the third accumulator assembly located here first. The third accumulator assembly is in a bore in this area of the casting. Before removing anything, you should check to see if not only the third accumulator valve will move back and forth freely, but also the second and fourth accumulator valves too. You simply pick them with a tool. Notice how it snaps back. The fourth accumulator valve does too. The second accumulator is free also. If any of them are stuck and refuse to snap back, you will need to remove these clips, the accumulator valve, and a small spring between them. I'll demonstrate how to do this when I get to the second accumulator assembly. Note how the end plugs have threaded holes so you can install a bolt. The threads just happen to be the same as the ones on the valve body bolts. Let's borrow one. Thread it all the way into the plug. Removing this retaining clip can be difficult without the right tool. As you can see, it's recessed too far for me to pry it out with a mechanics pick. These very thin long nose pliers reach it, but you may not have a pair this small. You can make an even better tool from a very common item. A paper clip. Bend an end over like this to form an L shape. Insert the end of the paper clip. Reach under the clip and pull it out. Set it aside. 
work the end plug out. Remove the springs. This model only has one. Finally work the plunger out. At this point, wash the casting, plunger, in plug, and clip in mineral spirits. Add fluid to the plunger and reinsert it like so. Let's get the new springs from the kit. According to the instructions, we need an inner silver spring, a slightly larger diameter orange one, a larger white one, and finally an even larger diameter orange color one. Here they are, and they fit together like so. Install them into the bore. Put fluid onto the end plug. Push it into place. Reinstall the clip. Make sure that you put it in the middle slot, not here. Remove the bolt from the second accumulator end plug and thread it into the fourth accumulator plug. Remove these accumulator parts as we did with the other. Again, wash the casting and the accumulator parts in mineral spirits. Add fluid to the plunger and insert it.
According to the instructions, we need an inner, middle, and outer orange colored springs. They fit together like this. Insert them. Put fluid onto the end plug and install it. We still have one more area in this casting to modify. The second accumulator valve assembly. Step three not only describes replacement of the accumulator springs as we did with the others, but also explains how to replace this accumulator valve, which is actually the same as the third and fourth accumulator valves here and here. They are made of aluminum, easily damaged from debris, and known to become sticky or stuck. The new one included in the kit is made of steel and not of aluminum like the stock original ones are. You can use it in any of the three accumulator bores if you need to. I'll install the new one as shown. Thread the bolt into this end plug. Remove the second accumulator parts. The accumulator valve is still under pressure from a small spring between it and this retainer. I'll lift out the retainer with the pick which will release the spring, but I'll also insert a 3 8 inch drive extension into the bore before I do in order to prevent the spring from flying out. Note how the clip is folded over this way. Set it aside.
Place your hand over the bore opening and tilt the casting. The spring will fall out. Set it near the clip. Remove the accumulator valve by hitting the casting like so with a wood block. This valve can be stubborn, but keep hitting it. It will eventually come out. This is the new steel accumulator valve. Insert the new valve with the flat end towards the far end of the board. Stand the casting on in and work it in with the pick. Insert the small spring. Set the casting down. Compress the spring with a medium sized screwdriver with the blade turned like so. Orient the clip exactly like this. The slot will go over the screwdriver blade. Insert the plunger. Let's get the new springs. We'll need three orange ones and a silver one. Install these as we did the others.
remove the bolt and return it to the small parts box. Take the modified accumulator body to the transmission. Set it over these two studs which act as guide pins. We'll install the bolts which fasten it later in the next lesson. We're almost through with this lesson but let's quickly set one more assembly into place here, the solenoid pack. This is the new solenoid pack. Note that there is a hole here. Step five of the Transco instructions recommends you drill six holes as shown if this hole is not present in your solenoid pack. The one we are using has the hole, so no modifications are needed. Take it to the transmission. Apply fluid or assembly lube to this O-ring and the connector bore in the case. Set the pack like so and push it down into place. As with the accumulator body, we'll install the bolts which fasten it later. That's about it for lesson 14. Take a break. Later in lesson 15, we'll modify and install the main valve body.